Sometimes we read about failures like this in the Bible and kind of judge these individuals on their mistakes, almost like, how could they do this? But before you judge Peter, let me caution you. Even as believers of Jesus, saved by grace and bound for glory, you and I have denied Jesus in the past and may even be currently doing it now by what we say and how we live our lives. Welcome to the House of Caiaphas. Maybe. The location of the Palace of Caiaphas is disputed. Some believe it's here under what is called the Church of St. Peter in Gallicanto. Others believe it's a little further west near the unfinished Armenian church, and still others believe it's under the Jewish quarter in the Old City. But just like the other holy sites around Jerusalem and throughout Israel, we all need to keep in mind that as Christians, we worship the person of Jesus, not the locations he was or may have been to. So who was Caiaphas? Caiaphas was the high priest and was the son-in-law of Annas, who was the former high priest, but tradition suggests that Annas was removed by the Romans. So after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, the religious leaders met to discuss Jesus and his growing popularity. This is when Caiaphas predicts Jesus' death. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. Now, before we discuss what possibly happened here at this location, let's go back to the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus was arrested. Everybody knows the story. Judas, one of the twelve disciples, agrees to betray Jesus, and during the Last Supper, Judas leaves the group to enact his plan. Jesus and the remaining eleven disciples went out to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus predicts Peter will deny him three times, and Jesus prays three times to the Father, both of which I cover in my review of the Garden of Gethsemane, which you can check out here or in the description below. Now, let's pick up right after Jesus finishes praying. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priest, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him, and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Now Mark 14.53 states that they took Jesus to the high priest, but Matthew calls him by name. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. See, the Garden of Gethsemane is just to the right of where I'm standing here in this photo. Here you can see the Kidron Valley, and there's the Temple Mount. And then southwest of the Temple Mount is where the house of Caiaphas is. So, Jesus was led here after his arrest. This would have been the steps used to bring Jesus up from the Kidron Valley to the house of Caiaphas. Now, Jesus was brought before Caiaphas and the other religious leaders as they looked for any evidence against Jesus that would be deserving of death. Many testified against him, but their statements did not agree. But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Now really focus on this next verse. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fist, and said, Prophesy, and the guards took him and beat him. It's easy to just quickly read this and move on, but Jesus was spit on, punched, and beaten for you and me, and this is just the beginning of his physical suffering. Then in Mark 15.1, Very early in the morning, the chief priest with the elders and the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So some time passed between the sham of a trial and Jesus being brought to Pilate. So again, if this is the correct location, Jesus most likely would have been held here in this dungeon. But there was one other big moment that took place here. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus predicted that Peter would deny knowing him three times. After the arrest, Peter followed Jesus from a distance, and when he was brought to Caiaphas, he stayed outside in the courtyard. Two times Peter is asked if he was with Jesus, and two times he denied it. Then he was asked once more, and his response... Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I do not know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Sometimes we read about failures like this in the Bible and kind of judge these individuals on their mistakes, almost like, how could they do this? But before you judge Peter, let me caution you. Even as believers of Jesus, saved by grace and bound for glory, you and I have denied Jesus in the past and may even be currently doing it now by what we say and how we live our lives. Do you pick and choose what to follow from the commands Jesus gave? Do your actions or words that you speak blend in with your worldly friends, family, and co-workers just so you don't offend them? 
Do you refuse to share the soul-saving message of Jesus to those in your life that you know are lost? Do you avoid speaking up about Jesus for fear of being picked on and laughed at? Jesus was beaten to a bloody pulp for your sins and my sins, and we sometimes choose our own comfort over the possibility of getting made fun of just by sharing our testimony. Am I stepping on any toes? If so, good. I'm stepping on mine as well. See, I am guilty of all these things at different points in my Christian walk. And the truth is, we have all been Peter at various times in our lives. But, also, just like Peter, our story doesn't have to end at the moment of these failures. In the last chapter of John, after Jesus had died and rose again, Jesus restores Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Then at the end of verse 19, Jesus told Peter, follow me. We fail, we repent, he restores. Do not let the devil imprison you in a mental cage of condemnation and guilt. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We are called to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. We are supposed to stand out, not blend in. We have a mission from the mouth of Jesus. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Are you terrified to go to a co-worker or a friend and pray with them? Are you uncomfortable inviting someone to church? Are you scared of standing out for Jesus? Just pray for boldness, pray for strength, and trust that whatever happens, even if it may one day cost us our very lives, Jesus loves us and will be there with us no matter what we face. Now, this concludes my review of the House of Caiaphas. I hope you got something out of this. In my next review, we will discuss the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as I take you to the garden tomb and I will also be discussing Golgotha and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.